Hey guys, how you guys doing out there? Good morning, good early Friday morning. So this article is coming from Motley Fool and uh, it's, it's written by Adam Levy. So what is cryptocurrency? We all now have heard of cryptocurrency and most of us still don't know what it is. So cryptocurrency is a digital currency that doesn't rely on a central bank or trusted third parties to verify a transaction and create new currency units. Instead, it uses cryptography to confirm transactions on a public distributed ledger called a blockchain. So there are thousands of different cryptocurrencies in circulation, each with varying values. The first cryptocurrency is uh, Bitcoin, the first ever, ever, you know, proven blockchain, was developed in 2009 by a programmer using the pseudonym Sato, Satoshi Nakamoto. So in, 20, in 2008, white paper entitled a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, Nakamoto provides the first description of blockchain. Blockchain is the technology that enables cryptocurrency to work like government-issued currency without the involvement of any central bank or trusted third party. So specifically, blockchain uh, solves the double spending problem associated with digital cash. Since digital information is easily copied, digital money requires a mechanism that, reli that reliable prevents reliably prevents a currency unit from being duplicated or otherwise spent more than once. The global financial system as a collective entity has historically been responsible for establishing and ensuring the legitimacy of monetary transactions. The validity of cryptocurrency is established and maintained without any involvement by the world's central banks. Instead, Ledgers of cryptocurrency transactions are publicly maintained. Transactions verified by blockchain technologies are immutable, meaning they cannot be changed. That prevents hackers from producing fraudulent transaction records and establishes trust among users. So how many cryptocurrencies are there? There are thousands of cryptocurrency. I believe it when they say thousands, there are a lot. According to CoinMarketCap, there were 30,669 cryptocurrencies as of 2021, and I believe it to be uh, further than that now. The reason there are so many cryptocurrencies is because it's extremely easy to create one. Very easy. Hence why regulation is needed. Ethereum's blockchain allows users to write bits of codes to the blockchain, essentially letting anyone, giving anyone the uh, opportunity or the, as long as you have the knowledge or the skill set, the background, to launch a new token that issues that uses the Ethereum net, network. So instead of having to build the whole thing from scratch, developers can just use the pre-existing infrastructure. You know, and that just debunked my just my last point right there. I guess you don't have to. <laughs> Why are they doing that though? Like, I mean, give. I mean, I, I guess they want as many use cases as possible. They're giving people the freedom to, but I I still believe that regulation is needed in this space. How cryptocurrency works? To make a cryptocurrency transaction, you need a wallet for that digital currency. A cryptocurrency wallet doesn't actually hold any currency. It merely provides an address for your funds on the blockchain. A cryptocurrency wallet also includes private and public keys that enable you to complete secure transactions. You can buy or sell cryptocurrency using the cryptocurrency exchange. Exchanges which can hold deposits in both fiat and cryptocurrencies, credit and debit the appropriate balances of buyers and sellers in order to complete cryptocurrency transactions you can also use cryptocurrency to buy something such as product or service every time you buy cryptocurrency or use it to complete a purchase you authorize the movement of a specified amount of the cryptocurrency from your wallet address to the wallet address of the seller the cryptocurrency transaction is encrypted with your private key 
and pushed the blockchain and pushed to the blockchain. Sorry. So the cryptocurrency network miners access your public key to confirm that your private key was used to encrypt the transaction. Once the block that includes your transaction is confirmed, the ledger is updated to show the new cryptocurrency balance balances for both your address and the seller's address. This entire process is conducted by software. So why is it called blockchain though? A blockchain is a collective a, sorry, a blockchain is a collection of transaction data on a cryptocurrency network. It basically states that person A, so we're going to A and B here, and X, there's an X, and a Y, there's a Y there too. So, it basically states that, a, that person A sent this amount of cryptocurrency to person B. Person X received this much cryptocurrency from person Y, and so on. A block includes a reference to the block that immediately precedes it. The blocks create a chain linking one to another through references to prior blocks. To change a block in the ledger, a hacker would have to produce the entire chain of blocks. Following it, since not doing so would create a chain of invalid references that would not be accepted by the cryptocurrency network. So they're saying that that's the only way that it can be act and seeing that it um, the blocks are created, uh, the block the blocks create a chain linking one to another through references to prior blocks. So if the hacker get one block wrong, it's a fail. So the more blocks are created on the, on the ledger or on the blockchain, the harder it is to hack. So you have to know how the all those blocks were created. And seeing, I don't know, this there's a lot more <laughs> technical detail to this. So Blocks include additional information that further enables the cryptocurrency network to verify the validity of the block. The proof-of-work method of establishing distributed consensus relies on cryptocurrency miners using high computing power to add blocks to the blockchain. The computing power solves complex puzzles such as math problems for which solutions are easily verified as being correct. The miners are typically rewarded with cryptocurrencies and, tra and transaction fees. New blocks cannot be added to the blockchain without a miner computing a valid solution to the block's puzzle. With every transaction, the blockchain grows longer and the amount of computing power required to add to a new block increases. The blockchain by design becomes increasingly tamper-proof a hacker today would need computing power equivalent to the majority of the computing power of the cryptocurrency network to successfully alter transactions. So we're talking about proof of work here. And there's two, um, there's few different uh, blockchains. So you have the um, proof of work. And you have proof of stake. I think that's it. Either it's either proof of work or proof of stake. <clears throat> so, moving on. So, blocks include additional information that further enables the cryptocurrency network to verify the validity of the block. I read that already. Another method, another method of establishing distributed consensus to add to a blockchain is known as proof of stake. Instead of re requiring vast amounts of computing power, the proof-of-stake method enables the cryptocurrency holders with the most wealth or the oldest stakes to create blocks by verifying transactions. Stakers are selected semi-randomly. Additional mechanisms are in place to prevent the wealthiest individuals from creating fake transactions or otherwise exerting too much power over the blockchain. Why is crypto so popular? Increasing, increasing utility. 
new uses for cryptocurrency and blockchain technology are developing all the time. And I think because uh, anyone can join this space, it's going to get even more popular. But with regulation, it's going to be so hard to be regulated because you don't know which uh, cryptocurrency is actually telling the truth about being decentralized or being a part of the blockchain. So from new decentralized finance or DeFi, apps to blockchain games to non-fungible tokens or NFTs, the industry is constantly evolving. Additionally, more retailers and service providers, service providers are accepting cryptocurrencies as payment. Attractive investment. So this is the reason why crypto is so popular now. And back in the day, like, let's say three years ago, <laughs> or even five, six, seven years ago, crypto was like four, between one or two percent of, between one to four percent of the world's population actually knew about crypto. And now today, it's mainstream. So, attractive investment. The value of cryptocurrencies as an asset class has skyrocketed over the past five years. In that time, it's shifted from a niche topic to receiving lots of buzz. Basically, same thing I just said. In the mainstream media, many people see it as an attractive asset class to invest in to produce outsized returns. So, futurism. Many people believe cryptocurrency in the future of Cryptocurrency is the future of money. Indeed, many businesses across various industries are developing ways to use blockchain technology to improve operations. We could still be in the very early days of cryptocurrencies. And that's true. So, here are a, here is a chart of some of the biggest um, cryptocurrencies. These are the five largest cryptocurrencies. You have Bitcoin, of course, with a market cap of 1.156 trillion. And then you have Ethereum with a market cap at 533 billion. You have Binance with a market cap at 93 billion. You have Solana with a market cap at 44, 74 billion. You have Tether with a market cap of 72 billion. So the list of the most valuable, and this is where we get into um, the fluctuation of crypto. <laughs> so the list of the most valuable cryptocurrencies is always changing, just like the list of the most valuable public traded companies. But since cryptocurrency tend to be more volatile than blue chip stocks, how cryptocurrencies rank in value can change quickly. And that is true. There are there are a few instances at the top of the list, though. So Bitcoin is by far the most valuable cryptocurrency. As the original cryptocurrency, it has the strongest adoption rate and a large network of miners. Those factors ensure it remains at the top of the list. Ethereum's Ether is the second largest cryptocurrency and consistently so. Ethereum serves as a platform for other cryptocurrencies besides Ether. And offered an offering decentralized applications to other token creators ensures that Ether consistently remains greater value, greater in value than others than those other to tokens. So most cryptocurrency rely on the decentralized application provided by Ethereum. So I guess Ethereum is a decentralized application that represents the blockchain. So, best cryptocurrency, the best cryptocurrency. So Bitcoin and Ether stand out among all the others. Buying Bitcoin is an obvious choice for anyone interested in cryptocurrency. Um, listen, this tip is coming from the article. I am not a financial advisor, so don't, do not take financial advice from me. I just, these are the, um, the articles I like reading. <laughs> it's right. Because the, the crypto, the technology, blockchain, or the Bible. <laughs> All right, and then me doing silly things on my shorts. So it's widely reported and a well-established ecosystem of software is valuable to facilitate transaction. Either Ether, Ether, so Ethereum, is attractive, is attractive because 
of the value of the Ethereum blockchain in establishing new tokens, DeFi services, NFTs, and other blockchain applications. Advantages and different disadvantages of crypto. And this is uh, um, a nice way to end it, but <laughs> look how far how to mine crypto. I don't think we need to learn that. Like, Guys, if you need to learn how to mine crypto, I, go ahead and go, you know what I'm saying? Here's the article right here. Like, yeah, here is how to, according to Motley Fool, here's how to mine crypto. But I am not reading that. I am not reading that part of it. Oh, wow, it continues. Are cryptocurrencies a good investment? Where to invest right now? I think that's it. Are cryptocurrency a good investment? All right. So I want to um, get into, where is it? So advantages and disadvantages of cryptocurrency. So speed, a cryptocurrency transaction can take as little as a few minutes to confirm. Once confirmed, the receiving party is able to spend the funds however they see fit. In traditional finance, it takes at least a day for a transfer to clear. Lower fees is a second. In many cases, the cost of using cryptocurrencies is substantially lower than using traditional finance institutions. There's no fee for storing cryptocurrency. For example, whereas many banks charge a monthly fee, the cost to spend money to someone internationally is extremely low compared to the traditional international remittance services. So no barriers to entry. Unlike traditional finance, there's no need to have a valid ID or go into a bank to use Bitcoin. There's no credit check. There's no know your customer information you need to provide that can be extremely attractive for the millions of unbanked popular i mean unbanked people around the world and see this is the the benefit the benefit um the, that uh they scrutinize a lot when it comes to uh demonizing the technology this and and they use this benefit to say um uh what is it terrorists are using dot blockchain or um uh, you know criminals are using this a mean as a mean to survive or to develop their their you know terrorist schemes and plans right so no barriers to entry unlike traditional finance there's no need to have a valid id or go into a bank to use bitcoin there's no credit check. There's no know your customer information, KYC, KYC um, that can be extremely attractive for millions of unbanked people around the world. And one of the reasons uh, for um, it to be like this is they want, one of the original reasons, they wanted the unbanked folks around the world to be banked. Guys, so make sure you hear this now. They want you to find a proper way to spend your money where they can track you that's another way of banking is just make it seem like as if you know this is going to be beneficial to you because it's fast and it's uh, look at the security cryptocurrency is much more secure than old and cash or using a debit card for transactions on the internet a hacker would need your private key to steal the bitcoin you held in your wallet. Furthermore, cryptocurrency transactions are generally anonymous. So, you hear that? Uh, maybe VPN, right? Right? So, <sighs> there go, let's, there's so many benefits. And of course, when you think about it, this is another banking system. It's just digital. So no issuance. There's no issuance on funds held in cryptocurrency. Funds deposited in a bank account in the U.S. are typically issued through the FDIC. If the bank loses your money, you're covered up to 250000 per account older. There's not necessarily any recourse if, you're, if you or your custodian loses your cryptocurrency. If you lose it, you, that's it. It's gone. <laughs> 
It's, it's crazy. It's like, yeah, you lose this, you're done. And in the um, central banks, or regular banks, you're insured up to 200. So for millionaires, so you know, they've been losing a lot of money because they're only insured up to 250,000. So no way to dispute transactions. If you ex accidentally send too much to someone or you don't receive what you were supposed to in, a, in exchange, there's no way to dispute or reverse a transaction. All transactions confirmed on the blockchain are finalized. The only way to get your money back is if the other party agrees to send it to you. Swallow that, people. Easy to lose access to funds. If you lose your private key, you no longer have access to your funds. The private key is necessarily necessary to sign transactions and write them to the blockchain. Make sure you back up your private key in multiple places. Crazy. So high vol 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 volatility. Every time I said that word, I was messing up. So high volatility. So I guess all right. So they, I guess they bunched up the advantages, advantages and disadvantages. I have to scroll back up to see what I was really reading. Are these good things or bad things? And some of them actually sound bad, like easy to lose your access funds. Um, no way to dispute transaction. That don't sound good, you know. So anyway, so high volatility. The values of many cryptocurrencies are extremely volatile. This can make it difficult to use as a means of paying for goods and services, since retail price would need uh, a fluctuate, need, need to fluctuate to adjust to the volatility of the currency, which is a true statement. That's why I don't understand Shiba Inu being accepted in so many different markets. It's like, I keep questioning this myself. Like, what is Shiba Inu solving? Compared to what is it trying to represent? Right? Because you can buy so many millions and billions. People have trillions of it because it's so cheap to some people. Right? And then they want you to spend it. So you're basically putting your money into this technology. To reuse it somewhere else. Why not just go spend your money? <sighs> I don't know. Shiba community. You're losing me, man. I was so big on it. Now I'm just like, ah, where is the value? We've been talking about this value. I know it's only two years old, so I need to give it a give it a blind, give it a chance. But still, like, man, I don't know. I want to see that value. Same as the other um, blockchain uh, technologies or applications or, you know, or, sh or smart contracts or, you know, I digital identity and all these are showing uh, real use cases. Where is Where are the use cases for, um, for Shiba? You know what I'm saying? Or is it just my mind is being switched over because... I used to see different uh, cool ideas that I used to research and read upon on Coinbase when they were uh, promoting the education. You, f you learn. I got pulled into crypto, really, with um, Coinbase paying you to learn. I'm like, what? I'm going to make money by learning? Let's do this. <laughs> so I started doing it, right? And I started reading up on a lot of cool projects that I believe that was going to be worth something. But, you know, I think my mind is uh, changing in a sense because I, I want to be more solid in, in the projects that I have my interest in, right? So, and I want to, and by being solid, meaning that company has to be solid too as well. The innovation has to be solid. It can't be no, you know, oh, this, this would be nice. <laughs> it has to be, here's a solution. Here's here's a problem. Here's a solution, and this is how we're solving it. That's what it has to be concrete, no foolishness. All right. So anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. I plan the thought that came to mind. I'm gonna make shorts of um, the the advantages and the disadvantages. These are, these are really good for shorts. Nice 10 second, 20 second, 30 second read. 
right? All right. Anyway, guys, take care. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, reading is what? Fundamental, fundamental. So make sure so you guys, you know, take some time to read. You know, the nice weather is coming for those who live in the cold part of the world. Nice weather is coming. Go on the beach. Go get some sun. Right? And read a book. Do something. Go to a park. Go read a book. Start reading. All right. Take care, guys.